Anyway, we've got resisting the lies. He'll come on and maybe calm me down a wee bit because I'm 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 slightly triggered. A, a, a bit of jock doom to cool me down. <laughs> Mr. Resisting the Lies, how are you, sir? I'm no bad. Thanks. Yourself? Yes. Very well, very well. Did you did you get a chance to see that stuff about Farage then? No, I only seen your telegram post there. Uh because I'll be a bit busy there, like, but so he's uh going by your telegram post, he's He's now shilling for jib jabs. <laughs> well, right? yeah. no, he's, he's, he, basically what he said is mm -hmm. that, no, so two Israelis came and the, the, the border force questioned them and now they're saying this is like 1930s Germany all over because they're asking Israeli citizens questions at the border. <laughs> I mean, I, here, here's the thing. Everyone sees this now. Everyone knows what's going on, but you've still got these sort of right-wing conservative types. They just... They just, they just love Israel. It's, it, 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 do, do people not see this? <laughs> I think that the only good thing to come out of all this is a good portion of everyday people can see it. Uh, you know, but no, I've not, I've not. I'll be honest, I've not really paid much attention to the news today. I was, I was busy. See, I, th I think so. what, 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 one of the problems you face as well is like where, where people don't understand is they're not maybe intelligent enough to see the, the like. If I was to use an analogy, like what what the wider public are seeing is the sort of the River Nile flowing, which is Hamza Yusuf, the Green Party, the SNP. What they're not seeing is the Lake Victoria, where it all starts, you know. And and they're uh. they're not seeing the bigger picture. And and I and I see this quite a lot. People are like, oh, a Muslim's coming in and he's going to shut shut me down. Now I do think that does have an impact in it because I think eventually the likes of Yusuf from a cultural perspective I mean these guys are for blasphemy laws like freedom right. of speech is fundamentally a European value which they just don't have in these countries mm. you know you make you made a good point there and funnily enough I was speaking to my grandmother earlier on in the day and her exact words were that she gets the impression that this is blasphemy laws through the back door as my grandmother said that about this hate crime bill I could definitely see that aspect of it, and have you not noticed as well? Though he's very clever whenever he's uh, he's been interviewed about it or whatever, or he's, or he's passing comments. He never brings up Islamophobia. He always bring, he always brings up anti-Semitism uh, yeah. instead. I find that yeah. very clever. It's not many times you'll hear me complimenting Hamza Yusuf, but I think that's deliberately worded. Yeah, yeah. I mean, and 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 it's 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 interesting. So just to give people a bit of a background, there's a new hate crime act. It's said to be starting, funnily enough, on the the the, the first of April, um, and obviously you and Mister No Chance have been doing a great job talking about the the way that um, critical race theory and everything else has been put in. But just give us a bit of background about this new hate crime act. Then, um, well, they're wanting to effectively. It's there's like several characteristics now that are going to be classed as protected you've got a uh, race uh they took gender out of the bill i find that quite funny they took they, well sex sorry they took sex out of the bill um uh -huh. when the feminists back in the day back i think it was 2021 when this bill was first getting run through parliament the feminists were up in arms about it obviously for obvious reasons because sex would have included men so they pulled sex out of the bill and then we're getting an additional misogyny bill um uh -huh. you've obviously got the transgender uh as are going to be protected uh, age disability etc and it's it's the wording that i just find very sinister about it because it's like if if your intention is to stir up hatred uh, and that can be that can be anything at all whatsoever that's deemed hateful by not even the victim a bystander and it, it goes so far uh where you can be in your own home like they've removed any sort of dwelling defense dwelling yep. protection yeah and so you can say something in your own home and if somebody deems that to be hateful uh, or, you know, deemed to be yep. said out of, uh, you know, with racist intentions, et cetera, then you could quite easily see the police at your door. And the police well, have but said I, I don't know if you remember be, that, that, uh, that there's the clip of them where someone says, what about people's houses? And Hamza Yusuf replies, well, do you think it's do you think it's OK that someone can be a racist in their house as well? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> like, this is what we're dealing with here. It, it's. It's really sinister um, when you when you read through it. I mean, it was a long time ago that this bill actually passed. 
in the parliament. Yeah, uh, I think it was 2021 that it was initially it was eventually passed, um, and it was a lot more draconian in its initial stages. Um, but yeah, all so called apparently agreed uh, on a final version, and here we are. But it's like there are all the sections. You know, if a person commits, I'm reading the racially aggravated harassment section. If a person commits an offence, uh, sorry, a person commits an offence if the person pursues a racially aggravated course of conduct which amounts to harassment of another person and is intended to amount to harassment of that person or occurs in circumstances where it would appear to a reasonable person that it would amount to harassment. Now, this is like a copy and paste for all the different protected characteristics, but even that that language, if it would appear to a reasonable person, so it goes back to that old cliche, like the arbiters of truth. So who, who are going to be these quote-unquote reasonable people that will determine whether or not you've said something that's hateful? You know? Um, see, do you think, though, what what will happen is because they have brought out stupid bills laws like this before and like they remember there was the offensive behavior at football act and then they just they had to chuck yeah. it because they just got overwhelmed do you think there's a possibility that well because a lot of people are talking about this is they're just gonna that it might actually push people even further to be more bold and then they'll just they'll kind of overwhelm the system with it because i mean the fundamental thing is they can't arrest everybody um, like what? No. What I think they will do, and this is what the regime does, especially in England, is they'll target one or two people, like in a hostage situation, and then that acts as the deterrent to everybody else. Like they've done with James Costello, like they've done with Sam Melia. You know, they'll they'll, they'll maybe do that up here. They'll 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 drag out like a few people. I mean, I'm hopeful <laughs> they might not even target higher profile people like me or you or, or anyone else, like they'll, they'll, they'll take some poor guy who works like in a, a shop somewhere and he maybe says something about, I, 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 I don't know, you know, all oh, these, these, you know, whatever, you know, these, there's lots of Jews in the banking industry, you know, they'll, they'll make an example of someone like that just to scare everyone. Yeah. I, <laughs> I'd like to think that that's what's going to happen. I mean, there's so many different ways that this could go realistically because of the sort of way that it's worded. It could easily be abused uh, for all the wrong reasons, or dare I say, for all the right reasons in the sense that people, and I've seen a lot of people suggesting that they're planning on doing this, uh, that they're just going to effectively spam Police Scotland with multiple complaints because you can do it anonymously as well. You don't even need to put your name that's to good. it. So I've seen a lot of people talking about that. I have had an idea that I'm debating doing at a later date, and that is to, you know, you mentioned critical race theory at the start there. Uh, there's quite a lot of information out there to go and prove quite clearly that they're anti-white, which is racist. Let's let's not be around the bush. Like, I've, I've had an idea maybe to sort of get enough people together to start playing them at their own game and report them, but... Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. But yeah that John's right now. He's right. I mean, the bill is, it is deliberately vague, and the thing is, yeah. all we hear is vitriol, though. We've heard the Hamza Yusuf speech, the Anna Sarwar speech, Towards right. white people, like it, 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 anyone else is fine, but it's it's fair game on whitey, and and you you and no chance do a great job of of exposing the the nefarious CRT and its involvement in local schools. Yeah, that that is becoming a much larger problem. And um, the one other thing I will say though, before if you want to get onto that, the more proof to what you were saying there. Remember, Police Scotland's own website with their hate monster campaign <laughs> yes, specifically yes. stated in that that the people that are most likely to commit a hate crime. Yeah. Are men, if uh, they're eighteen to thirty years of age, uh, that suffer from white male entitlement. Now, if that isn't a clear indicator who this bill is actually designed for, I don't, I don't know what yeah. to tell you. Like, you know, yeah, so. yeah, 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 a hundred percent. Yeah, and I, I mean, in fairness, they did have to actually pull that down. And what, yeah. what I've kind of noticed as well is though, even, even some of like the more liberal commentators, like your average, like sort of like BBC chattering class herald type. I think they even recognise that this goes way too far. And and yeah, they, they would probably like us to be in jail, but they still realise that this is maybe mm. just pushing it a wee bit too far. Yeah, it is, because to the comment that you highlighted earlier on about, about the vagueness, that this could be applied to anybody. Like, mm -hmm. I mean, it's obvious the reason that it was sort of created in the first place is designs for a specific <laughs> demographic. However, 
it can very easily. Hence why you've got the, as they're called, TERFs, like all these sort of gender critical feminists, like they're all up in arms about it as well because they could potentially be in the crosshairs. Uh, you know, anybody could be affected by this bill because it's it's about perception, which effectively, boil, and it comes down to, you know, thought crime in many respects yes. because you don't actually have to say anything that would be sort of definition, t- textbook definition, racist or homophobic, etc. All it takes is for somebody to perceive <laughs> you to be racist, etc. You know, right. so it's intense. Like, well, they, they, and then they'll go on about things like microaggressions. They'll talk uh, about, as you as you say, well, I, it, I mean, and how many times, and everyone knows this, that ethnic minorities play the race card, you know, like, yeah. and, and you know that they'll then know, like, people will know this, anyone who's ever had a car accident or been involved or knows someone that's had an accident with someone, from an ethnic background, they they are very very quick to accuse people of racism. They're very very quick to point that out. And with way the way this is going, you know, if Whitey's involved, then they'll just they'll take it that Whitey's guilty straight away. Yeah, yeah. Can and I, I mean play, even even play the this? Term. Yeah, on you go. Can I play this? Clip? Building racial literacy at Newark Prime. Where is Newark? Glasgow, I think, or Inverclyde, one of the two. Right, let's play this. We pride ourselves on being welcoming and inclusive to all, but sadly, attitudes to race are still a work in progress. Although only 4% of people in Scotland are people of colour, Scottish government... 4%? Where is it you stay again? Don't need to... Are you up in the northeast? Uh, Inverness. You're up in Inverness, right? Yeah. I think it's way more than four percent. If I'm, you know, yeah, in, in they're, they're, they're still going by the 2011 census, which was 96 percent white. Uh, that I think it was 87 percent, 88 percent Scottish, but yeah. it was 96 percent white. Don't Bullshit. know what the next census is going to be. On that <laughs> no, thing, to be way more than. I mean, that's what I say. Is like driving around Glasgow. There's yeah. just there's a lot of Africans. There's I mean there's there's loads of foreigners now. There's no way. I mean, I would say Glasgow is probably 60 40 now. Scotland's probably about 80, 20, maybe 80, 10, 80, 20, mm. maybe 85, 15. Government polls suggest that 45% of Scottish people see black and Asian people in a negative light. For children, this can be especially harmful. How they speak, feel. Li- I mean, look, just look at that. Look at how bad that is. Look, ha, 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 ha. Oh, look. The wee- I mean, they've got kids to draw this. Yeah. That, that's the one, like, it's a primary school, you know? It's the rhetoric that they're coming out with. Like, these are children. Uh, this is the point uh-huh. that I keep trying to make whenever I'm, I'm doing streams on my own or any Telegram posts, etc. Or even on Twitter, not that I use it much. Like, this this is happening in primary schools, right under people's noses. Yeah. You know? It really is. It's, 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 it is disgusting. And it is, it is like, you, you know, they talk about, like, Jim Crow or or like South Africa, like I mean, and I'm not I'm not I'm not virtue signaling saying this, but this is kind of the same now, except it's now against the white majority, isn't it? Yeah. No, 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 you're not wrong. I mean, I mean, then when you start to look at the the definitions that they're using, even you you brought up Hamza Yusuf's white speech earlier on, yeah. and then now this art. Actually, all ties into what you're, you've got on the screen just now because their speeches, they were they were looking at, you know, pointing out all the different positions of power in Scotland were held by white people, and they were using that as proof of systemic racism because there's no <laughs> browns in these positions. And this is what yeah. we're doing. So Scotland is racist because a majority white country is racist because the majority white country has no non-whites in positions of power. This is where we're at now. But this that rhetoric stems from critical race theory. But it's got so much worse than just dickheads in our parliament saying these things. It's now in our schools. It's not yeah. even universities anymore. Yeah. You know, I would have a yeah. problem and, with and they're, 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 They are. They're hitting kids young, aren't they? It's... Yeah, it's so much so. Early years, which obviously is the terminology that's used in Scotland for nursery kids. They've got yeah. early years resources. So it's age yeah. appropriate, if you want to call yeah. it that. Yeah, yeah. Feel, learn and play can all be impacted by prejudice, even if they don't understand why. I'm so sad. Why do people treat me like this? I mean, <laughs> I mean, the thing is, everybody knows that 
Like, do you know what's so annoying about this? It's actually really untrue. You dare, you you dare not look at a foreign person the wrong way. You, you. I mean, you're. I mean, they've created. I mean, the thing is, you're already. Well, I'm not, but they've already created a situation. You're terrified because of the consequences of it. Now they're saying you have to be even more terrified. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, it's it's. You can laugh to a certain extent at how stupid it is, but it's. And I do sometimes, don't get me wrong, there's been many occasions where I've, I've ripped the piss out of some of these people. Not the children, don't get me wrong, but um, on the flip side, it's just, I don't, I can't honestly find the words to to put it in a sentence to yeah. describe how vulgar I think Ch- it is. Ch- children, children are always very easy to manipulate. I mean, I, I, yeah. I, 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 I've said this, if see the see because of the way people are in this country our kids i mean you could you could have kids within two months giving roman salutes do you know what i mean if you if you if you gave them the other uh, other you, side you of could, things you could uh, you, you, you know and yeah. and the same with a lot of the other sheep as well they they would literally just do whatever they were told you know they are they're they're that's the one problem that we really have in this country is critical thinking and analysis is is has just gone out the window and it's well, this is what you have to believe, and if you don't believe it, you're you're also you, you could you could change this on a dime, though. Which again, I don't think is overly healthy. You need you need to have an intelligent thinking population. Yeah, I mean, I, I'm a firm believer in just leaving kids alone. Mm-hmm. Quite frankly, I mean, the, the laugh of the Scottish government uh, as our education standards overall plummet. Uh, yeah. <laughs> they, they pride themselves on. And this is their words, but they pride themselves on the curriculum for excellence um, producing the ability for children to critically think. <laughs> That's what they say. Yeah. <laughs> and, and I find that yeah. remarkable because, as you pointed out, there, there is absolutely no such thing as critical thought in our schools anymore. None. It's propaganda None. from the that minute is. they enter school all the way till they leave the other end of it. Yeah, and I mean, look, not not of course all schools, not all teachers, no. but the problem is you get one of these activist teachers, um, and are you getting to one of these, and then it's just it's wall to wall, right? Let me just play the end of this clip here. At Newark mm. Primary School in Port Glasgow, Port Glasgow, right? A group of children formed an anti-racist club to speak, draw, and write about how this issue affects their lives inside and outside. <sighs> but do you see see the thing is as well. You you're also creating this culture where, like, even I'm I'm sure. I mean, I don't think there's that going to be that many ethnic minority kids in Port Glasgow. I mean, there will be some, but I mean, you're you're now getting into a position where you are making at that young age everything about race, except you're saying that person who's with of color has to be like loved by the. As as you say, you shouldn't really do this with kids, should you? You should just leave them alone. No, exactly. And I mean, there's another video that springs to mind. Uh, it's all my Twitter. You probably have seen it, though. Do you remember the one? It was, I'm looking at my Twitter now. It was, I've got, I posted it on February the 15th. Right, uh, I can give you the it? link in the, yeah, I can yeah, give yeah. you the link in the private chat if you want. Give me the link, please. But yeah. it was the one about climate change, uh, where they, yeah. they affect, the, this is children. It was a Glaswegian school, primary school, and it's children yet again, and they're regurgitating. You know the talking points from our textbooks, and all of a sudden they're climatologists, but they uh-huh. blame white people for climate change. <laughs> I know, I know, I know, I know. Thing is, I, I, I was, I was thinking the other day as well. Like my wee boy came back from school, and I, thankfully he's not had stuff like this. But they, they, mm. they do talk about, they do like the world is on fire. And I was thinking, I, I remember that shite when I was at school. When I was at school, it was the ozone layer. Uh, well, what age, are, what age are you? I'm twenty eight. You're 20, so you're a wee bit younger than me. But when I was at school, it was the 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 ozone. Were, were you still at school when it was all the Al Gore stuff? See, we didn't. I don't remember getting it in school, but I do remember hearing about it, uh, like the whole in the ozone layer, and uh, not so much Al Gore. I came across his stuff as I got a bit older, like when he said that like New York would be underwater and all this shit. Yeah, but that thankfully was not left out of my school. Um, for the most yeah. part, but the whole in the old one where I do recall a primary school teacher bringing that to our class one day. And where's that? Where did that go? Yeah, well, it, it, <laughs> it, it, healed, it healed itself like that. That that, <laughs> uh, that was the big one. It was it was a global cooling in the seventies. Mm. Yeah, that's right. Stop using deodorants. That was the big one. Remember uh, that? Yeah, acid rain 
the ozone layer. I, I, I remember being scared about the ozone layer, thinking, oh, no, we're going to. And then <laughs> they, they, they terrify the kids. And then it was uh, global warming in the early 2000s. Uh -huh. And now it's just climate change. And the thing is, the climate yeah. change is the, the real the real clinker as well, because like the climate always changes. So yeah. they, they can, they can just make... Key. Sorry, go on. They just make everything climate change. Mm -hmm. But then on top of that, though, like what's on the screen now, like then you start to see it's actually even more sinister than that with this climate justice BS, because yeah. they say that like in order to save the world from, you know, an eternal fire, we need to have socially just, equitable societies. Yeah. It's like, what the fuck's that got to do with the climate? You know? Yeah. <laughs> you know, but but, but wait, 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 again, this really does cut. And see, th this is the other fundamental problem you've got is all the people pushing this shite, they'll all be on big public sector salaries. They'll all live right. in a nice leafy suburb somewhere. They'll have ethnic friends who are also in well-paid jobs. You know, they're not going to be like friends with the with with the, the Somalian Deliveroo the Deliveroo biker, right? No. And, and and but then what they're basically saying is, well, we need to now bring in millions of Africans because it's our fault. I mean, Not like climate refugees, <laughs> climate refugees. That's right. I, I I remember this guy. This guy did the hatchet job on me because um, of my work with George Galloway, and he was he was like my mass migration. He went, I mean. Do we not have a responsibility? You know, because we, we it's our fault that we're ruining these. I'm like, honestly, yeah, they're, they're, <laughs> every angle. But this is this video here is directly uh, linked to what you said there. Let, let me let me play it then. Let me play it. Yeah. Climate justice means to talk about how climate change affects people, not just the environment, and how it affects some people much more than others. Climate change is very unfair that way. The people who did the least to cause it are already suffering the most. Look at them While burning. The look at the look at the wee look at the wee people burning. Oh no! <laughs> are already suffering the most. While the people who did most to cause it won't feel the effect. Look, people that did most to cause it. What? What's the one thing they've all got in common? Oh, they're it's whitey, isn't it? <laughs> they say climate justice. This means we focus on and help those people worst affected right now. We listen to their voices and make decisions that help them. But to understand why climate change affects people differently, we need to travel back in time. Hundreds of years ago, European explorers began travelling to other countries and continents. Oh, no, 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 please make it stop. Oh, no, so it's colonialism that caused this. It, it gets worse, mate, it gets worse. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Looking for trade. They sailed to places where people already lived. Places rich in natural resources and culture. The European... Yeah, places... Right, I, I was reading a story about um, Lagos in Nigeria. Do you know when... Or was it... Was it Janine? No, Janine's in um, the West Bank, in Palestine. Um, where is it? Benin. Whatever that is. Is that in Nigeria? And Sorry. one of the big rituals they had there was human sacrifice. And <laughs> and the British went and put a stop to it. Like, again, in, in India as well. Like, oh, look... I'm not daft. I don't think everything about colonialism was wonderful. I mean, we're certainly reaping a bloody shitty dividend from it. But again, they've just totally rewritten the history of yeah. what colonialism was. Like, we brought a lot of things with Aye. us as well. Yeah, it wasn't all plain sailing. The thing is, I remember when I was young, we used, I remember going to museums when I was a wee boy and they would say, look, we did the slave trade. It was wrong. <laughs> But, you know, we still brought schools, we brought education and, and we did improve these places. So there was there was a there, there was good and bad. Whereas it's now you can see where this is. It's just, well, it was all bad, which is a, a straight up lie. Yeah. You know, it's shocking. Right. OK. No, it's just oh, idea that they wanted it for themselves. They began to take over and colonize these places taking what they wanted, including people for slaves. They did this in many, many countries. This meant that the colon... And do you know, do you know why this is, again, it's just it's completely untrue? The Barbary slave trade, there was slaves... Mm -hmm. Like, the, the Africans the were already enslaving each other. 
Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's, uh, you, you mentioned revisionism. It's also it's also very selective, you know. In order, because if you were to put the wider picture and, and bring up all these other slave trades, past and present, you know, Barbary, as you mentioned, Arab, uh, going all the way back to fucking Egyptian times, yes. you know, it sort of it deflates the narrative that they're trying to perpetuate, which is the white man rocked up mm. in Africa and just grabbed a bunch of blacks and shoved them on a boat and then yeah. <laughs> sailed to her. Who owned the slave be. ships? Are we going to find yeah. out who owned the slave ships? Oh, no, <laughs> of course you're not. <laughs> like, oh, uh, it's, it's, it's just so, do you know, do you know, do you know what this is as well? Right. And I, I, my audience get annoyed, annoyed at me that this is the, this is the end result as well of feminism, because I guarantee you, and, and a lot of the clips that you put, put out there is, it is women. This is, this is a very feminine, interpretation of history yeah well i mean to be fair you're not you're not wrong uh, for anybody that wants to chastise you for that i mean you can just point to like the fact that they say themselves that there's that they're looking for more men to enter the teaching profession in scotland mm-hmm. because it's overwhelmingly female yeah. so you're not wrong <laughs> at all really <laughs> It is, it is, it is. And as as I as I as I point out, women in these positions, if you were to if you were to turn off one tap and turn on another tap of propaganda, they would soon just be telling <laughs> I, I, I get stick for this. They would soon be saying the very opposite. Like it wouldn't it wouldn't be very hard but there is i think i think as well with with this strain of new propaganda though they they take it with with a history of glee because it is the ultimate form of of virtue signaling <laughs> someone in the chat puts it in brilliantly they turn everywhere into a primary school i know i know it is <laughs> it's, it's, it's 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 what it's like Colonizers mm. became very rich, and the people they colonized became poor. No, they didn't. No, that's a lie. I mean, that's another complete lie. These countries were fucking not rich Shipping. before. <laughs> the natural resources. Indigenous knowledge. I mean, oh no, this is just lies. <laughs> yeah, <what happened? laughs> like forests, one with nature. good farmland, clean drinking water, and their indigenous knowledge. And then a couple of hundred years ago, we had well, much more oh, than sorry, others. sorry, an actual factory. And then a couple of hundred years ago, we had the industrial revolution. Fossil fuels were burned to power factories and to ship goods and materials around the world. This meant there was huge demand for natural resources like wood and coal to burn. This caused huge destruction of ecosystems, especially in colonized countries. The Industrial Revolution. Again, no, no, it didn't. Look at the birth rates in sub-Saharan Africa. Look at the population explosion in sub-Saharan Africa that is only as a result of of the Industrial Revolution and mass production of food. Yeah. You know, it's, it's just... There's, there's nothing in this video that's correct, but, it, like, the... The, the ending, <laughs> mate, well, on, 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 you can get a guess where it's coming. I might, I might commit a hate crime. <laughs> What's the start of climate <laughs> change? The hate mon- I, know they, they, I know the hate monsters. Just, I, I should have like a wee <laughs> hate monster behind me that just, that just, that just, that just rises up. Yeah, and look, people are pointing this out as well, and it is true. I remember again when I was at school, we used to go to like New Lanark. Did you, did you ever go to New Lanark at all? Mm, Maybe a no. bit far away from you. That was like an example of, I mean, we used to, the kids used to work up chimneys in this country. Children used to work in fucking carpet factories and run in and out of the machinery and, and, and like die. Like, again, this is garbage. Like young children used to, to die here as well. Mm -hmm. No, there wasn't very much white privilege back then. That's for sure. No, no. And and that, what, what this actually does as well is in, in some ways, this is a very this is a very middle class and privileged interpretation of history because a lot of working class people in this country did have shit cond- and I mean they were I mean how, how many white people from this country as well from like working class areas used to go and die on far flung battlefields you know and mm-hmm. and and die in these like it's it's it, it's a, this is a very class it, like I mean I'm sure like some people in like Galloway's party. You know, we'd we'd be able to to deconstruct this from 
like a, a class perspective. Do you think that's a fair observation? This is like a very middle class observation of 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 like a, 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 of what working people in this country were were done. Oh yeah, no, I would say so. I mean, good thing about my school back in the day, I did learn an awful lot about uh, what it was like back in the day. But like even uh, pre-war, yeah, you know. Post-war, pre-war, Britain. Yeah, uh, it was yeah. not exactly a great place to live at all. No, uh, no. it was not. Uh, you know, I mean, you've, everybody's probably familiar with some of the imagery, if nothing else. Like they sort of get flung about telegram from time to time, and you see little boys and little girls, and they're they're covered in, you know, was it called smoot or yeah, or that, yeah, like, they were chimney it is. sweeps. Yeah. Kids, kids were chimney yeah, sweeps in this country, covered in jets, working in factories, as you as you pointed out there, etc. You know, it was not an easy life. But you no. fast forward now, and you've just got these people, regardless of whether or not they uh, are often <laughs> a different ethnic persuasion or whatever, and they're looking back at you know, with on hindsight, with a totally tainted view of the world, a totally tainted view, and then in, in the process, they just completely revise history. Uh, I mean, it's a common trope on my channel, like whenever yeah. I'm making videos, whatever, I keep banging on about revisionist history because that's yeah. what that is yeah. by large what yeah. this is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 So now, yeah, the idea true. of racism was invented at this time to justify the enslavement of black Africans. In European countries, during the Industrial Revolution, poor people moved from the countryside to big cities to work in factories. They lost their land and the working conditions in the factories were terrible, with very low pay. This is still happening in countries across the globe today. The effects of colonisation, the Industrial Revolution and racism can still be seen today. Around the world, Indigenous people, people of colour, poorer people, women and children are already suffering because of climate change, even though they did the least to cause it. This is climate you know, injustice. Do you notice there that little list of people, uh, the demographics? Climate that justice they, means to talk uh, about how... girl yeah. mentioned there, there was not one mention of men. <laughs> so like every group there are people of color children women indigenous people except no men <laughs> yeah they hate i mean they, they do they do hate men so this is this yeah. is this this is climate ready schools this mm -hmm. was climate justice by kids for kids comments turned off i'll, I'll put the link into the chat a couple of people were, were 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 asking for it yeah i mean it's i i i i am um, I just see what's being done to society. It is young people that are really bearing the brunt of this insanity. Like, yeah. see, 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 when they talk about, um, you know, people about society, life's going on. If you if you're a kid at school and you're being brought up with this, like, it's no wonder they're gonna start, you know, wanting to tranny themselves. You know, they're 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 just being they're they're being pummeled by cultural Marxism from day one. Yeah, and it's an it's more or less in every subject now. Eh? And I mean, critical race theory is something that I speak about quite a lot. But I also do a lot of stuff on my YouTube channel, which I'm <laughs> surprised I've still got to be honest. <laughs> but uh, about learning for sustainability. Uh, this is another thing, which obviously the term sustainability that is directly from Sustainable Development Goals Agenda Twenty One Slash Thirty. Like Scotland has got a program called Learning for Sustainability. Then you've got Global Citizenship Education, yeah. right? So uh, all these different tentacles. So that they, they're being taught all about climate change, climate injustice, climate yeah. justice. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah. Then, you know, like. <laughs> Every facet no, no, of no, the school is just propaganda. No, nowhere is exempt from this. No. I mean, obviously, I don't, I don't want to go into specifics, but my wee boy does goes to an independent school. It's exactly the same there as well. Like it, it is, it is in everywhere is infested with cultural Marxism, and yeah. and I even point that out. And the thing is, they don't realise it. Like they just they they don't see what's going on. And and my wee boy's still what six, so he doesn't really get it. I mean, it's not too bad; it's not too in your face. But I can I see it, like I mm -hmm. see it everywhere. I see signs of it every day, and I, I and that the, if the if these are supposed to be like more conservative institutions, completely infested with it, you yeah. know, everywhere else has got like no chance, you know, and and that's why so many people now pull their kids out of school and and they homeschool them. Yeah, and I mean, I'm, I'm going to see if I can get this article up for you to... Now, there's it there. 
this is a, this is a school uh, in Inverness. Uh, this this is it's a small little article, but it's about a teacher. Uh, is that the one at the top wait, for me? No, that was um, that was the article version of the first video you played. Okay. Uh, the, the wee kids talking about. But yeah, here, here's it here. This is this is a primary school again. This is global citizen because it's not just critical race theory. This is insanity, yeah. and I mean, this is like Milton Lays is about fifteen minutes away from my house. Anna, you know, like, early years teacher Anna Shim Shimield. Yeah, <laughs> very curious name. <laughs> is that a is that a common name in Inverness? Or no, I mean I don't like show the pictures <laughs> of the kids, but um, Anna Shimield. Right, okay, that's quite an interesting. Name <laughs> um, an Inverness. Uh, this is a planting seeds bit, right? Yeah, the, the, uh, just a wee bit down. The, you'll see it. It's called planting seeds, just underneath the green. There it is, planting yeah. seeds. Right, okay. Yeah. In my classroom, I am passionate about harnessing the power of play for teaching and learning. We know that young children learn best through play. As part of the seeds for change, I've given the opportunity to hear some knowledge about how young children. And work with a Highland One team. Play can transport children that are unfamiliar and open doors to new experiences. This involves creating a provocation toolkit, practical method for creating hooks into global citizenship themes such as gender, anti-racist education and nature connection. And look at this shite. Pupils' confidence and self-esteem have grown as a culture of community and belonging has been nurtured in our classroom. I mean, it is, it is, it is, it, it, the thing, the thing is as well about it is you, you, you can imagine these people go home at night and feel that they've really done. I mean, I fought racism. How was your day today? How was your day today, darling? Well, I fought racism today. I, I fought back against the patriarchy. <laughs> yeah. the, the Highland one, you're not wrong by the way but the, that Highland one that was mentioned there was part of a group of uh, I think they're, they classify themselves as charities but you, there's a few of them there's like Scott Deck there's another one uh, Was Deck like, and I, I mean I know for me saying the words are loud people might not know how to spell them or whatnot, but they're all part of this there's about five or six different groups and they cover, you know, the Highland One world is obviously for the Highlands. Was Deck, I think, is the Glasgow area. Scott Deck's uh, the East. Um, so Edinburgh area, etc. And they are in, working in tandem with the Scottish government and they are pummeling this this stuff into yeah. schools like, in, in the form of resources. Do you not think, though, and I'm just thinking a positives here, that the, the people, kids are attracted to counterculturalism though and if the entire culture is cultural marxist surely kids will now start to rebel against that like if you had ultra conservatism mm. which we really had in scotland from well for hundreds of years i mean that like the 50s 60s 70s 80s where scotland was an ultra conservative country um and obviously a lot of these people were brought up in that and and they were rebelling against that system do you not think yeah. from a positive perspective people will grow up in this shite and they will just rebel against it just because it's it's the cool thing to do, which is which is good for us? Yeah, the, I, I would I would probably say there will be some, but my my main concern is that they they're no longer just because it used to be like high school. Like if you remember back, like I think it was like 2013, 2014 time. That's when like they started to start introducing like the LGBT education in the schools. Might even have been a wee bit yeah. further on than that. I know. I Scotland, never got any of that. I never fact neither did I. I. Um but Scotland was the first country in the world for anybody that didn't know, first country in the world to uh, make it mandatory for schools to teach That's that right. shit. But, That's right. But and there was a there was a big there was a big furore at the time because they they, yeah. they repealed section twenty eight and introduced mm. it and there was the Brian um Suter stagecoach and his wife they 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 put up a lot of money against it um you know and and it's it's, it's you, the thing is as well like what what these people did which was so sneaky it's look we just wanted equality we just we just yeah. want fair treatment and now it is a slippery slope look at where we are now aye and I think though like to it was that was targeted mainly high schools and I used to say um it's all like my earlier stuff and that. 
or even just conversations I had that you're going to have a much harder time trying to convince like people that are in third or fourth year of this new way of thinking because they've you know they've grown up without all this bs and they're, they're at a point in life where they might have the, the ability to critically think dare i say and you're going to present all this nonsense that men can be women and vice versa etc however times have changed since then and they dare i say have accelerated in proceedings because now they're going after children and even yeah, younger are. than that nurseries so i yeah, i wonder if it's if, if it's even possible for people to sort of break out of no. Off that, if, you, if you're being bombarded with that mm. from nursery age and you're not yep. having yep. any sort of counter argument, That's any right. pushback at home from your parents or whatever, right. because your parents might very well be very liberal, shall yep. we That's say, right. themselves. Right. And then you've got the mainstream media propagating mm -hmm. the same BS. Then you've got all the kids' TV shows promoting the same cancer. Like, there is literally no escape. No, <laughs> like, it's, it's around you. Uh, you know, so I can't help but feel, sadly, I'd like to take a positive, but I'm very pissed. No, I, 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 I know what you're saying. It, it does feel a bit over... It, it feels a bit overwhelming this time. And, and I, I yeah. think what will happen, and, and, and the evidence proves this, is all these kids will grow up, the, the fertility rate... And the, this is, people say, what is the end result? It's the fertility rate. None of these kids will go and have kids. They'll they'll yeah. just they'll stop breeding because they'll feel guilty because of climate change. They'll feel guilty because they're white racist. They'll 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 they'll, they'll they won't be able to afford a house. They won't be able to afford it. So they'll just there'll be no kids born. And that's already happening in Scotland already. So fast forward 10, 20 years when all these kids are of adult age and whatnot, or you know, where historically they would have been planning for families and, and marriage, etc. I think it's going to be a lot worse. I mean, Scotland's birth rate is yeah. the lowest it's been since they started recording them in the first yeah. place, 1855. That's the, the lowest. Simultaneously, though, you've got our population continues to increase uh, annually. Yeah, you're going to work that one out. <laughs> <laughs> you know? what, what was the birth rate in Scotland? What would you say it is amongst like Scottish women? One I don't point know. two. Do you know, it's probably less than one now. I would I can say. Maybe see if I can get it up. I and then you've got yeah, quickly, assisted but... dying is. I mean, in many ways, this is it is a it is a death cult. It is a doom cult as well. And um, Ponton's asking, "Is there any good news?" Well, <laughs> not not really. I'm afraid it's it's <laughs> what Scotland, we no. do at UNN is is honest mm. news, um, <laughs> and we try and just warn people to be aware. But that that's what will happen, and 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 you you get to a situation like. A, a, a Korean style situation where the the whole thing just collapses and and it's brutal and but then the the problem in Scotland and and I keep pointing this out where I near me where I stay there's a fucking there's a Ferrari garage so there's obviously people aren't that poor if they can drive Ferraris there's an A380 flies in every single day to Glasgow Jesus. and jets off to Dubai so there's it's not as if everybody's poor here. Yeah, but the vast, vast majority of people are. <laughs> like... yeah. But there's, but there's, but the, this is the thing, and I point this out: there is a lot of people bought their council house for a couple of grand, and it's now Aye. worth two hundred grand. There's, there, yeah. there is money in this country, and and or they've got like a triple lot pension, or they had a bloody, you know, final salary pension. It is, it is all being knackered for young people. They're ruining the lives of the young, and 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 that. I think is the biggest betrayal. That's why during COVID, I was so outspoken about um, the, the jabs for the kids because uh, it, 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 it's the self, like no one thinks of the further generation. That's what really upsets me the most. They don't, they've, they've stopped caring. And, and there is, again, there is that death loop. Well, what we'll do is we'll bring in foreigners and we'll, we'll have foreigners do all our job. And well, do you know what? Well, we had our chance. Let's bring in some Africans and they can live here now. Yeah. And they like, they don't think long term at all. Like, and uh, the laugh of when you mentioned it about, like, they, they clearly don't care about children, but they pretend that they do. That's the thing that they say that, like, especially where <coughs> climate change, for example, is concerned, they say that we're thinking of our children's futures. Yeah, oh, it's all right. That's why we need socially just, uh, equitable societies. Oh, yeah, good one. You, you call me. Fuck. But uh, 
No, I I've pointed this out so many times, and it, it, you know sometimes you feel like you're you're just you're talking to yourself in, in many respects because the vast majority of people they they ain't remotely bothered. Like they're it's not, I wouldn't even go as far as to say that they're apathetic. They're just they're going about their lives and they're not really paying any attention. No, and you, no. but it annoys me because every single person and th this is so prolific in the Scottish Parliament in particular, but I know it's a common theme elsewhere. Uh, including the EU, etc., where they keep talking about the only solution going forward is immigration for our low birth rates. Yeah. There's never any talk as to figuring out why it's births terrible. are declining. No investigations. There's no suggestions, no references to trying to reverse the trends. There's nothing to do with incentives, etc., to try and reverse the trends. And there's nothing to suggest that any uh, incentives that were put in place would actually rectify the problems. But the fact that they're not even attempting it, they don't even no, mention none. it. It's just immigration. And nobody thinks long term as to what that means. No. If, Scottish, if the Scottish birth rate, and I've got an article up here where a, a late, the number of births in Scotland drops by 7.5%. That was last year. There were only 11,897 births registered from July to September in 2023. And it's got like... It's a pitiful amount of births. Yes. Well, I, I, I said that from, from my recent term. experiences. If you want to see what Scotland's going to look like in 10 or 15 years, go to a maternity unit, right? Yeah. Because there's not a lot of Scottish people at a maternity unit. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I can, I can quite well believe it. I'm, I kind of have a luxury being up here. <laughs> like, yeah. it's it sort of still looks Scottish for now, but it's... But nobody's thinking long term in in the terms no, of if we start no. to import. Well, and, and if you deal with it, you, 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 see, this is the thing again. And people get really annoyed at me when I say this. It is such a woman thing to do. Like, no, you can't say that. Or nye, nye, nye. like that's that's what it's like. Like, you, know, you can't that might offend someone. Well, but okay, it has to be we'll, said. We'll, we'll just destroy our entire country. Yeah. We'll just we'll, because we might offend someone and and. But the problem is, though, they're bringing in laws that even if you do talk about it, they'll just they'll lock you up for it. Uh, I mean, <laughs> exactly. but it does. These are the sort of things, like, what I just said there, I wouldn't even deem to be sort of controversial. I know that, like, no. Hamza Yusuf and whatnot would see it another way, but I'm pointing out a very real future in the sense that, like, if we're not having children and they're importing people to have children on our behalf, and even if the people that they import don't have children, they'll just import more, more to have people, children in yeah. all of our behalfs. Eventually, the scales will tip. The Scottish population will continue to decline, and the immigrant population will continue to increase. We're gonna come, there's going to come a point yeah. where yeah. it's I, irreversible. I, I mean, I, I I hope we see a change, but what what the, the but the, here's the thing: people will say, "Well, but this has happened. This has happened, and this is why the Roman Empire fell. This is what the Romans did. The Romans." stopped building roads they stopped joining the army they stopped they just thought well let's just bring in people from the rest of the empire to do it and look mm. what happened in the end exactly <laughs> exactly so it's not it's well. not as if there isn't and it's happened to nearly all civilizations and if yeah. if i suppose you you you, you and i'm sure there were there, there, well there's many people around in 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 ancient rome that were warning about look we do you think this is a wise idea, allowing all these Visigoths to come in here? I mean, did we not used to be at war with them about 50 years ago? And then when, you know, the barbarians came to the gates, they they opened the gates and, well, um, look up the gates of Toledo incident as well, what happened in Spain. I mean, it is, it is just, it is, it is really, really hard. And, and as you see, people just... There's no hunger or appetite to do anything. What, what, why do you think that is, that people are just so apathetic? As I, as I said as well, like, there's a lot of people that I wouldn't even give them the courtesy of calling them apathetic. They're just going about their day. They don't, they're not paying any attention. But as for the apathetic ones, I don't, I really don't know if, like, is that just sort of, is it generations where era are very proud of their country and whatnot? I think you could make the argument that they sort of removed that from education, and it goes back to what we're saying then about like leave kids alone and whatnot. But like, there's a lot less emphasis on being proud of your country, and you, like, I, this is just my 
hypothesis anyway, and I think that might go a long way to explaining it. There's just there's no love for the, our countries anymore, and no. you know, throughout the generations, See, he, he, that's he, gone. He, so here's the thing now, as well. I, I I am not now. I am not now vehemently opposed to the notion of Scottish independence. The only reason I'm opposed to Scottish independence now is because it would just be like an it would be like the Republic of Ireland. It would be an ultra woke hellhole. You know, like <laughs> I mean there, there 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 is there is the argument that I, I knew people in the at the time in 2014 said that well maybe if Scotland did go independent it would be a form of shock therapy that 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 might wake people up but i i actually don't know about that i think i think it would might go the other way i think you you would just go like like ultra ultra left wing even more yeah. so than we are now yeah like with hindsight i, I mean i was in favor of independence in 2014 like but uh don't get me wrong in hindsight i'm very glad we didn't get it yeah because since emerged I mean, they were eat pro EU anyway, the SNP. But in recent years, post twenty fourteen, they have made it very, very clear that all they want is for Scotland to be in the EU. So, yeah, very yeah. glad that that never came to fruition. But like, even even the S, this is something about the, the SNP in particular that really annoy me is it's there's been a Scotland's a very unique country in the sense that nationalism, quote unquote, is allowed. But it's a very subverted version of yes. nationalism, yeah, you know. Whereas English people are berated to high heaven for yeah. if they're England first, you know, little Englanders, all their races. Yeah. But up yeah. here in Scotland, yeah. we're all about the nationalism, you know. But it's a very bizarre. It, it's form it's, of it's such a it's such a let's be blunt about it, it's such a gay form of nationalism. <laughs> yeah. you know? it, is, it is, you know. I mean, <laughs> like, I mean, they they and what they've done with it, they've said is. Angus Robertson said, "If even if you've if you've come and studied in Scotland, you're Scottish. You know that. Yeah. Like I, I, I had a bit of a an epiphany, and I, I've, I said this to my viewers when I, I went up to Stirling Castle. Have you ever visited Stirling Castle? No, I've not. I, I mean, was near I, there it, for that it, conference. But... It, it was. It, oh yeah, yeah. It was. It was. <laughs> it was. It was amazing. Like and and to be in there." And and it, I mean it's obviously it's glorious the way it rises out of nowhere and just the history and and I thought about that you know mm -hmm. that the kings and and like to to go back and explain to like I, I know James the first and say James like you're the, the leader of Scotland in 2024 will be a man who's come from this country you know mm -hmm. and and Pakistan his family are from there that I mean how how could they would they even be able to comprehend that. <laughs> No, I, I don't. I really don't think so. <laughs> like, let's let's be honest. No, I don't think so. Uh, and if they could, I uh, dare I say, I don't think they would be uh, in favour of it. <laughs> let's, let's be, yeah, yeah. Let's and that's up. that's always my kind of argument: is at least at least English nationalism or British nationalism, at least there is a at least there is a bit of realism to it, you know. And 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 they they they. Like I, 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 I used to wipe people up and say, well, at least at least people in England voted for to leave the EU. People in Scotland, I mean, people they didn't even have the guts to vote for independence, you know. And again, I was campaigning vociferously against it, but I, I mean the world's changed so much in 10 years. Listen, that's been absolutely brilliant. We've been on nearly an hour talking about this, and some people complain I don't talk about Scotland enough. The, one of the reasons I don't is it's actually just too fucking depressing to talk <laughs> about me, Scotland. <laughs> You know, and 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 to see how far it's fallen, and and I say that like, I don't know how, how is it where you are, are, are? Is it dirty? Inverness is is it still quite clean? Yeah, like I've I've kind of lived a very shielded life in many respects uh, because Inverness. I don't have a, a good word to say about Highland Council. Don't get me wrong, because they're heavily invested in all the same sort of climate nonsense that the rest of the councils and whatnot are. But as far as the city itself, as small as it is. Uh, they're they're very nice. quick off the mark to sort out their potholes with their shitey yeah. tar and whatnot. Whereas in yeah. Paisley, my, my missus is from Paisley, like, and <laughs> my, like, the potholes are in, It really is. It, I, th I think I, I I think I I am more attuned to it because I see the way Glasgow's gone, and and I, we have right. a lot of viewers that are from Glasgow. The roads are an absolute disaster. The mm -hmm. litter is everywhere yeah. i mean it, it's visible how far it's fallen in just the last five years yeah the last time i was in glasgow was 
uh, oh fuck, I think it was a couple, I think it was just before New Year. Um, you know, I was taking a walk through there with my missus, and like <laughs> all the bins on the street, like the, the yep. public bins, fill the brim, but then there's like just additional litter piles <laughs> next to the bins, and then obviously you'll see the stories in newspapers and all about or the rat inf- infestation, yep. etc. And then, I mean, yep. police said about yep. the likes of Govan, <laughs> the pet or pot, yeah. Yeah, yeah, and know. and 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 it's it is it's, as I say, it's it is whereas in the Highlands or further up Perth, all these places they're still actually pretty nice, you know, and they're still the, 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 the they've got a nice view. I mean, where we are is nice, but it's it's the people. And someone made a really good point in the comment section about a smartphone. I I see this now everywhere. Wherever you go, everyone's just sitting staring at a phone. Like yeah. it's like that film Idiocracy. Listen, well, I'll put your Twitter link in. Is that the best place for people to follow you and keep uh, up to date that with your or, work? That or Telegram, like I'm on YouTube as well, obviously. But yeah, that or Telegram. Um, if you type in my name, Resisting the Lies, you'll find me on Telegram. Right, Resisting the Lies on Telegram. Well, guys, you go on Telegram, find Resisting the Lies, and, and keep up the good work. And you, no chance, are are good guys. You do a really good job, and um, I appreciate you coming on the show tonight. All right, sir. No, very much appreciate it, but thanks on. now. Right, okay, let me just see.